doctors, legal aid lawyers, and, and that sort of uh, people's attorney. All right. Regardless of all that, we do recognize that we must comply with the state bar's rules and guidelines, uh, just like any other school. All right. Um, so turning again to the issue of a notice of non-compliance, that has certain consequences. One of them is that there will then be an inspection pursuant to the notice. But I wanna point out that there is already scheduled for the fall of this year, a, a, an, an inspection by the state bar following up on our most recent inspection, which was in 2020. This, is this, this, this one for this year was ordered in the 2020 inspection to be done earlier than would be normal, which normal would be five years. Another consequence of the, if the committee issues a notice of non-compliance is that the school uh, will have to disclose in particular to applicants for our incoming first year class in the fall. We'll have to disclose the notice of non-compliance. Now that I think, well, I think, and I pr probably anyone would think is likely to suppress uh, the number of, to reduce the number of new students we're likely to have and may even cause present students to um, uh, resign. Our tuition is approximately 75% of uh, the school's income, uh, which is very small to begin with. Um, all right, why issue a notice of non-compliance? I pointed out my letter and it's also in our um, uh, supplemental compliance report filed in June. Uh, about the hey, hey, Dean Spiro, this yeah. is uh, Robbie Brody, one of the committee members. I just wanted I wanted to stop you for a moment to sure. just to get to the heart of the matter. What was the reason for your school's delay? The reason the, for the non-compliance right. is right. that you didn't do it by the date that you were directed. Just like taxes are due April fifteenth, your report was due on this date. What is the reason? You haven't. No, I haven't got to that yet. You're right. But let, let's get, get can we get right to that now? Can we get to that now? Yeah, I'm going to, I'll get to that right now. Right now. Um, the reason the was that we, well, we had a very serious problem with our administrator. We had a new administrator who came on in May and uh, eventually resigned in March after the uh, evaluation. And this administrator had great credentials on paper and did a very good interview, but it turned out she was, for some reason, incapable of doing the job. She did not respond to communications from the bar, many from Natalie, um, and did not do the disclosures, did not do hardly anything that was required of her. And, and therefore, when this March, uh, notice came out that we're supposed to file a um, uh, supplemental or whatever it was called a report, it didn't get filed. And so then alarm bells rang here and uh, I'm, I'm not the uh, uh, full-time lawyer for the school, but I was brought in to try and help with this problem. And we worked on it and we got the report in, it was in June, but there was a misunderstanding about what the report was supposed to address. It, we sent in a report in, in May. Uh, in any event, that's the reason. Now we have a new administrator. And I believe that our staff, and particularly Natalie, will tell you that the school has been very responsive and prompt since the new administrator came online Came online, started her job full time uh, in uh, April. I hope that answers your question. I mean, you're right. We were late, and we shouldn't have been late. 
uh, we had a, a, a problem I've never seen with an employee and I've had my own law firm too, um, but that's what caused it. Okay, well, I, I appreciate that, uh, uh, Dean Spiro. And of course, you know, we, we at this committee, we, we try to hold the, all, all schools to the same rules and standards here. And uh, I think that was the, the thinking behind the staff recommendation. Uh, I'm ready to make a motion unless there's any well, other comments by CBE today. Not I'm, I'm sorry, I, I need to, to, to explain a couple other things. I, I know I'm interrupting you, but I this is really important for yeah. a lot of people, not just the school, but but there must be a couple dozen online here right now. I'll make it as quickly as I can, if I may. Yeah, um, go ahead. Yeah, please right, quickly. Right. Uh, we want to be mindful of all the other agenda items that uh, Dr. Wilkerson has on his agenda. I understand. Um, the. Uh, Staff's report uh, about this uh, uh, for today starts with the report, the bar's report of their 2020 inspection. That report had 18 items of, of quote, recommended mandatory actions. Um, we are in compliance with 16 of those. There are two that were not. One is the, the, the most important one is the one uh, that was just addressed about uh, administrative staffing. Another one is uh, uh, not having the syllabi for all the courses. We do have a few professors, I think four, who just have not turned in syllabi. Um, and I'll say that one of the areas of compliance, uh, we are in compliance with turning in the 6061.7 uh, disclosure report, but we turned that in late and that was also a result of the staffing problem I just described. So to issue a notice of non-compliance when we are in compliance with 16 of the 18 requirements from the state bar's inspection report, I think does injustice, serious injustice. Thank you. Thank you. Um, staff, would you like to add anything else? Uh, Dr. Wilcoxon, I see that also uh, the board president from People's College of Law has also raised his hand to speak. And uh, just for procedural purposes at this point, uh, only administrators at the school are uh, providing public comment. Uh, other public comment was taken at the beginning of the meeting. Uh, if anyone at this time wishes to make further public comment, they may submit it in writing to the address noted on the agenda. Uh, would you like to hear from the board president? And that would be um, that would be Mr. Ramirez, please. And so, um, Devin, could you recognize? Um, yeah, perfect. Hi. Good afternoon. Can everyone hear me? Yes. Okay, and, and I think that I'll be short, and I know in the interest of time and out of respect um, to everyone's time, um, and I don't think, um, I don't wanna, I have the same points that Ira, Ira brings up, um, but I do wanna mention that um, I think out of, um, I think that this is an issue of fairness. I think that we are 90% compliant um, with the guidelines, and I asked, the committee to seek an alternative to non-compliance, something that isn't as punitive, um, rather than placing PCL in non-compliance, um, so that we could continue to, to, to work on the issues that we do have with the law school. As Ira mentioned, almost everyone in the school is, a, is volunteer. Um, the only person that is um, employed that's paid is our administrator. Um, that's not an excuse. I think that we should always strive to be in compliance. We should always be in compliance. Um, but I do want the committee to consider the factors that, that we've brought up um, as far as um, our staffing issue. And um, I hope that you'll take that in consideration and, and vote no um, to placing PCL in non-compliance and consider an alternative um, to that. Thank you. 
Thank you. Staff report. Sure. Uh, thank you. So uh, just a reminder of some prior discussion at the committee that may be helpful. Um, so when the school was last inspected, it is true that uh, after the inspection, the school was very responsive, took extraordinarily quick um, action to make major changes, including installing a new enterprise system, which they continue to use successfully now, uh, working to curb grade inflation, many other things. Um, those uh, those changes were adopted immediately, and they were sustained into the next year's annual report. Uh, the following year, however, the 2021 annual report and this year, um, that, that hasn't happened. And the committee made this unusual, uh, but appropriate to the circumstances request for this school because it had been their pattern uh, for the past three inspections to be very responsive, but not to sustain. Just to sustain. And this year, when the administration changed um, after the retirement of Dean Spiro, who had taken so many uh, positive actions with uh, the administrator at that time, uh, there was a challenge. And it's helpful to know that the State Bar applied um, extra support and extra time to this school, more so than others uh, doing an, an extensive Zoom teleconference with the new administration back in October. Um, corresponding and sending um, additional reminders to the point that those ideas were made standard reminders that all schools get. Um, and in terms of a particular individual, the State Bar won't comment on um, particular staff issues, but when the State Bar was corresponding, uh, the State Bar was corresponding not only with the administrator, uh, but also with other state, other school leaders who would have had notice of what was going on at the time. Um, this has been a challenge throughout this entire school year. And so this recommendation um, hews to what the committee asked the school to do, um, what was emphasized in August, um, what was emphasized in reminders throughout the fall, and um, in heightened reminders starting in January when the school did not post their disclosure, uh, when the school posted a handbook that was not only um, incomplete, but also had policies that were not compliant and contained notes, uh, clearly not a final product, et cetera. Um, when the committee has been um, reasonable with the school, the committee could have chosen a non-compliance in 2020, but because of the fast response in the midst of COVID, gave an opportunity to provide these progress reports. Uh, when the most recent progress report was late twice um, and also deficient, the committee still did not issue a notice of non-compliance, but gave a 30-day grace period. The school paid its invoice, um, but did not respond and uh, did not provide any reason as to why it did not respond. Um, the state bar supportively set meetings with the school after that. And in those face-to-face -face meetings after the deadline had passed, um, despite the, the meetings prior to the deadline passing, um, the communications prior, sorry, uh, the school did begin to take action and the school provided significant response in May and June. Um, and it's hoped that that will continue and it's hoped that the non-compliance process will provide support for that to continue. Um, so just putting that background that this committee has considered over the last several years um, might be helpful. I just uh, need uh, some clarification and your opinion, Natalie. Um, if the school goes into a non-compliance status, uh, how does that actually publicly affect their reputation in, in, in any way? I mean, is this something that's like well known and you should avo avoid the school? Or And, and then the second part of that uh, sounds like uh, President Ramirez is suggesting maybe another route. Is is does that mean another extension or so? I'm just, I'm just trying to understand the ramification of putting them into non-compliance. Okay, uh, so when a school uh, does have a notice of non-compliance, they do need to let the public know. They do need to let students know, um, and it basically correctly communicates the status of the school and the status of their compliance. And in, in this case, with this school, their ability to sustain the compliance. So it's really not meant to be punitive. It's really meant to ensure correct communication to the public and a staff, and we hope the committee, um, has also tried to be reasonable and efficient with the school 
school. Um, Dean, uh, Emeritus Dean Spiro did mention that the school is scheduled for inspection in the fall, and this notice of noncompliance will afford the school an opportunity to respond, um, and any inspection that would be ordered could be conducted concurrently. So it would not be a double charge, it would be a single charge, very efficient. Um, and if the school is confident that they can remain in compliance with, um, with this new team, they'll have the opportunity to show it this fall and it may be a short period of uh, non-compliant status if they can show that they've got a system. Um, but right now with the school in a situation where it is not providing statutorily required disclosures, it is not responding to orders from the committee um, until just before the committee takes a non-compliance action. Um, there's concern about what message that could send, uh, especially given that they've been um, given some latitude to date. Okay, thank you for the, uh, thanks, thanks for the information, Natalie. So uh, <clears throat> I have another question. Sure. Um, so, however, in, in light of the circumstances that have been explained, in light of the fact that they are approximately 90% in compliance um, and that they have had difficulties with uh, the prior uh, staff, um, is it at all appropriate, would it be possible to provide another extension in light, in lieu of uh, uh, notice of non-compliance at this point? Uh, it would be at the discretion of the committee uh, to either provide an extension or to provide further, um, further investigation on the part of staff to provide back to the committee. Um, this material that they provided was provided at the very end of the month at the time that we're preparing the other memos for you. Um, and so we actually have not been able to fully review all of the materials. So staff cannot yet provide a, a, an opinion as to whether they agree. Uh, with that level of compliance that's expressed by the school uh, because the materials were provided so far beyond the deadlines and so close to this meeting uh, that could be evaluated uh, for future consideration. Natalie, what about uh, table eight, the issue until the next meeting? Would that allow your uh, staff to, put to, to review everything that needs to be reviewed? Uh, that would be within the purview of this committee. But would you folks have enough time to review what you need to review within that time? Uh, because we haven't begun the review, I, I can't say for certain, but we could certainly proceed with that goal if directed by the committee, yes. Um, I'm sorry. Hey, David, did you say put this over to the next meeting? Yes, to table this issue. That's, to the next that's meeting. David's suggestion. Amy also just, just about to say something. Sorry, Amy. Oh, yeah. Um, my only concern is, um, you know, uh, as Natalie has noted, um, a notice of non-compliance could have happened a few meetings ago. And here the concern is, um, you know, what it might do to attract uh, incoming students. But if you look at um, what the, uh, what the um, uh, recommendations were, they're extensive. Um, you know, this, and we don't know if they, they are at a 90% uh, you know, compliance as, as the school reports. I think you know the committee needs to consider that we need to carry out our mission of protecting the public, and in this case, also protecting these uh, students, consumers of the of the services of the school. So, I just I want everybody to keep that in mind. That um, Natalie noted earlier that um, this could have been ordered back in 2020. We've made a lot of considerations for this school. So, uh, I know Natalie's provided that context context, but I, I just want to highlight that, that as administrators, it is a concern from the staff. Tori Alba. I understand. Okay. This is, uh, this is Rep. Judge Tori Alba. Are, are you present? Because if we do not have a quorum, uh, Judge Tori Alba may be juggling some other things and, uh, we can't vote. No, anyway. I'm here. I'm here. Oh, okay. Then you know what, uh, Del Dolores and David, I, I'm very mindful of, of your thoughts, but I, you know, I, I kind of go with, I, I just feel like a father to the students here. And you know, this is not the first time we've seen the school. It, it sounds like they're in a transition period. And I think that the staff recommendation is appropriate. So I'm gonna make the motion and we'll see where the votes are, Mr. Chair, if that's okay. Mm -hmm. 
so I'm going to make a motion here. I'm going to read it on my screen here that the uh, uh, committee uh, find that People's College of Law did not file an amended progress report or respond to staff requests within 30 days, receive and file the law school's amended progress report received on June 3rd, and acknowledge that the law school provide responses to staff questions, oh, provided responses to staff questions during the week of May 23rd, 2022, an updated handbook on June 3rd, 2022, and publicly posted statutorily required web disclosures on June 7th, 2022. Further, that the committee issue a notice of noncompliance based on the need to review staffing levels, procedures, required deliverables, and timelines to ensure compliance. The law school should be directed to respond within 15 days consistent with the rules. And finally, that the committee provides notice to the law school pursuant to rule 4.263 that it intends to pursue probation or termination of registration unless the law school can demonstrate compliance in its timely response. That is my motion. Is there a second? I will I'll second. second that. Second by uh, Mr. Torres? Yes. You'll be the next. Go ahead, vote, please. <laughs> OK. Uh, Alex Lawrence? Yes. Uh, Dr. Bolton? Yes. Uh, Robbie Brody? Yes. Jim Epting? Yes. Kareem Kankora? Yes. Dolores Heisinger? Abstain. Okay. Uh, Vince Reyes? Uh, abstain. Uh, Judge Tori Alba? Yes. Okay. Uh, David Torres? Yes. Uh, Dr. Wilcoxon? Yes. All right. Motion carries. Thank you. And then uh, I just want to make a uh, request that if we have other representatives uh, to be mindful of their time um, when they're giving their comments. Thank you. I'll turn it over to Dr. Wilkinson. Thank you. Agenda item 00407, action on response to non notice of noncompliance, American Heritage University School of Law. So in December, 2021, the committee issued a notice of noncompliance to American Heritage School of Law. The notice directed the law school to respond within 15 days regarding the status of numerous compliance issues documented during the law school's most recent periodic inspection. The law school did not respond. And because the law school did not respond, the committee does not have the basis to find the law school responsive to be satisfactory. That said, it's appropriate for the committee to order an inspection to determine whether probation or termination registration is appropriate. And that inspection would be remote. Is there anyone from the college here? Um, yes, there is. And uh, prior to that, I'll just mention that this morning, uh, well outside the response deadline, uh, the school did file a letter from its, uh, its attorney in response to one of the questions, as well as a response. And it would be appropriate to share this with the committee. Uh, and that information could be discussed during any proposed inspection if the committee should, show, should so choose. And at this time, I see the dean of the school, Dean Mosley, uh, has raised her hand to speak. Go ahead, Dean Mosley. Dean Mosley, you're in you're in the panel now. And you may need to unmute yourself manually. Okay, can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah. there you are. Okay. Uh, and if you wish, you may turn on your camera. Okay, can you see me? Yes. Okay, hello. First of all, I'd like to thank the committee uh, for this opportunity to speak to you. 
And I also would like to thank Natalie Leonard uh, for continuing and to being prompt in any of our questions and our inquiries. Uh, first of all, I'd like to say that we have been diligently trying to comply with all of the committee's requests. Um, we have, we submitted, I get uh, actually uh, two submissions. We submitted something back in February of 2022. And then as Natalie said, we submitted something this morning um, that contained, we hope, a response to every one of your uh, concerns. And in addition, we submitted a video of um, our responses. And so um, what we are requesting the committee is to accept our response and to review it, uh, our response and um, to consider um, at least consider um, uh, putting off this uh, inspection until a later date. I think perhaps uh, our latest response to you uh, might address any of the issues that you have and therefore that inspection would not be necessary. Um, if you have any other questions relating to, I guess, the, uh, the video or the response, I would like to also ask the committee to allow Aito Agamian to address the committee because he put together the uh, response, the um, video and uh, the response. At that, um, I have nothing at this point. Nothing further. Thank you, Dean Mosley. Staff report. Um, I I think that I don't have um, anything further to add, except that the period for the school to respond has lapsed, uh, but the school is afforded an opportunity through the remote, remote inspection to respond. Uh, because the school has provided a response to the inspection and to the warning letter that um, have not satisfied the committee that they that compliance has been demonstrated, it may be um, consistent with the process, but also supportive to the school to schedule that demonstration so that, I'm sorry, that inspection so that there can be um, an interactive conversation with the school as to their response, their video, and anything else they'd like to provide. Um, and then a report can be brought back to the committee for further consideration uh, consistent with the rules. Thank you. Discussion from committee. Thank you, Natalie, Doctor, and, and Dean. Uh, uh, if there's no other comments, I'm prepared to uh, uh, make the staff motion here. I think we're treating all the schools fairly and uh, equally, and I think we should con con continue to do so. Any other comments, or can I go ahead and make this motion, Dead uh, Chair? I don't see any. All right, then let me do that then. I'm going to make the motion that the Committee of Bar Examiners find that American Heritage University School of Law has not responded to the notice of noncompliance issued by the committee within the time frame provided by the rules and has not established its compliance with rules and guidelines for unaccredited law schools. Further, that the committee directs staff to schedule a remote inspection of the law school to offer a final opportunity to the school to address its compliance status and that the law school be directed to bring to that inspection any individual or information needed to fully address the issues raised in the notice of noncompliance issued to the law school and demonstrate its compliance with the rules and guidelines for unaccredited law schools. Further, that it's at its next regularly scheduled meeting, the committee take notice that an inspection has been conducted and review the resulting report, or if the law school does not respond, that this committee will take final action to impose termination of registration at its August 2022 meeting. That is my motion. 
Is there a second? Second, Kareem. Second by Mr. Gongora. And Can we have a vote, please? Amy. Sorry, I was on mute. Alex Lawrence? Yes. Uh, Dr. Bolton? Yes. Uh, Robbie Brody? Yes. Jim Efting? Yes. Kareem Gungora? Yes. Dolores Heisinger? Yes. Vince Reyes? Yes. Judge Tori Alba? <clears throat> Judge Tori Alba? Judge Tori Alba, are you on mute? Uh, no, no, I can have I don't know what my sorry, yes. <laughs> uh David Torres? Yes. Uh Dr. Wilcoxon? Yes. All right, the motion passes. Agenda item 0408, report on administrative updates for accredited and unaccredited unaccredited law schools. There's been uh, one new registrar effective May 9th, 2022 at Law School Trinity, Trinity School of Law, uh, Mr. Rocky Tindridge, and all accredited and unaccredited law schools have posted their annual disclosures pursuant to California Business and Professions Code 6061.7a. There were four that did not, but since have responded to the state bar and have done so. Informational only. The last item, agenda item 0409, approval of report on 2021-2022 educational standards goals. There's only one modification I'd like to suggest under point number one, Committee of State Bar Accredited and Registered Schools a presentation scheduled for August. Because August is gonna be a heavy month, I'd like to suggest postponing the August presentation uh, from the accreditors and allowing um, staff to research an alternate date time. That's it. Do I have a motion? Move to adopt the uh, operations management goals. This is Robbie. Oh, oh. Hi. Well, schedule a put. Okay. And schedule a presentation with the National Regional Institution Institutional Creditor August twenty second to a. Uh, to date uh, that can accommodate our schedule. This is Ravi, I'll second that motion. Okay, Alex Lawrence? Yes. Dr. Bolton? Yes. Robbie Brody? Yes. Jim Efting? Yes. Kareem Gungora? Yes. Dolores Heisinger? Yes. Vince Reyes? Yes. Judge Tori Alba? Yes. David Torres? Yes. And Dr. Wilcoxon? Yes. All right, motion carries. Thank Chair. you, Dr. Wilcoxon. Chair, I think we do have one. We have to circle back to one of the Ed Standards items to finish voting, right? Yes. You Natalie, what, to... what number is that? Um, I believe that when um, Judge Tori Alba returned, we were able to take the vote. I think that wasn't, that wasn't, okay. I thought it was the second one after that, but yeah, okay, we're good, we're good. Uh, which one are you thinking? Should we double check? I think I voted on all of them. I'm sorry. I'm just, I don't know what my problem is. Every time there's a on-screen something, it um, when I'm you're sharing the screen, it's it's interfering with my mute button for some reason. I, I don't know why. Okay. Ellie Kenny Quartz. But can we just check again? I'm looking at my notes too. Yeah, it looks like maybe uh, 0405. Uh, this was Pacific Coast. Item F. Uh, I thought you asked me about that, but if not, um, I said I, I, it was yes. Okay. Shall we do a, a second roll call just for confirmation yes. since we are together? Yes. Okay. okay. Sorry about that. Thank All you. Right. Um, so now, um, who would like to make the motion? I'll, I'll make that motion again. This is Robbie. Okay. Uh, do we have a second? I'll second it. Uh, that was uh, Mr. Reyes? Of course. 
Oh, Mr. Torres. Okay, thank you. All right, Alex Lawrence. Yes. Uh, Dr. Bolton. Yes. Uh, Robbie Brody. Yes. Uh, Jim Acting. Yes. Kareem Gungora. Yes. Dolores Heisinger. Yes. Vince Reyes. Yes. Judge Tori Alba. Yes. Uh, Doc David Torres. Yes. And Dr. Wilcoxon. Yes. All right, motion carries. Thank you. I believe that concludes all of our open items mm -hmm. on the agenda. Wow. So I want to encourage all of the CBE members to please join us. We need everyone to join in the closed session. Moral character. And right. the moral character goals. No, I, I we uh, approve those. Yes. yes. The moral character goals, but do we need to approve the minutes? No. I must have stepped out. We do. Uh, I thought we uh, voted on that. We took it out of order. Yeah, yeah we I thought All we right. did too. All right, we're good. <laughs> and, and we already did the minutes, so we're good. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Whew. okay. Just to finish up, we're going into close. Look for the email from Amy with the subject line closed session June 17, 2022. We're going into closed session. Now, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Bu mərdi gəl, bu mərdi. Here we go. Okay. <laughs> Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, great. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Appreciate all your help. Hey, everybody. Okay. I uh, see. Hello. Let me just give it a few seconds here. A couple people just connecting. Okay, it's one and two. Welcome. We're back in open session. So, believe meeting business business has concluded. Is there any more business? Seeing none. Okay, the meeting is adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Have a good weekend. Bye bye. 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 Happy summer. <laughs> bye.